Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to another 21st Century Renaissance and another open interest news that are breakdown on GameStop. I am your host, Dr. Michael Opiano, and it is another Monday. We are looking at a new trading week, and we have now moved into the August OPEX options period for GameStop. We're going to be thinking about what are some of our orienting values, of course, for the stock going into this week, as well as thinking about some of the macro factors that may influence our price action or may show when or indicate when we might see some, some restructuring uh, in our options environment. Um, yeah, may, may be able to show us some forward projection in that sense. So we're looking at that today. Uh, before we get started, we are going to turn our attention to our gratitude, as we do uh, before at the start of every episode. And today's gratitude goes out to Prince Jackson for sponsoring today's article and video breakdown, as well as to our monthly supporters, Not Medical Advice, Master Master, Kurt Lusko, Cosmotropic, Deswag52, and Hey Luckies, aka Faithless Looter, for helping offset data expenses, data and production expenses, I should say on a regular basis. Uh, so thank you very much to them, as well as to everyone who uh, who has contributed questions, comments in the past, uh, who does on a regular basis, as well as to everyone, of course, who joined our live stream once again last Friday. It is linked down in the description of this video in case you did not have a chance to catch it. We had, uh, yeah, I think we had a really great session talking about uh, how to think on a regular basis about uh, certain um, certain trading strategies, the models and such, uh, understanding price cycles a bit more, as well as understanding what may be expected uh, down the road, especially going into uh, quarter two earnings report at the beginning of September. So if you did have a chance, uh, if you do have a chance uh, to catch that, if you, didn't, if you didn't catch it, go ahead and check out the recording, of course, link below in the description of this video. Um, so let's get started. Uh, contextual overview, right? You'll remember we've been looking at this developing situation in the broader market, taking a look at our momentum and price action, our moving averages in, say, uh, the S&P 500, Bitcoin especially, trying to get a sense of what institutions are doing, right? How to use this signal as a way to possibly gain insight into uh, institutional uh, buying, selling, and positioning. So what we see here, right, is a continuation of some of this uh, consolidatory pattern that we've seen develop certainly over the past couple of weeks. So our leading theory, of course, looking at our indicators, as we look at our momentum indicator for the S&P 500 right here, so we can see that on our daily chart, uh, we're getting very close to a bearish crossover in our momentum chart. So we can see that even as our price has continued to push higher, uh, we have not seen buying volume um, appropriately continue uh, to match that price action to the upside. So um, this is uh, a thin movement to the upside, right? It is not robust. Um, we have not seen very much consolidation in that period. It's kind of just go straight up. Uh, so this largely says that, okay, institutions uh, may be going ahead and uh, distributing some of their positions, thereby uh, trapping us kind of in, in this area while they do so. Um, so, uh, right, we are looming very close, basically, within the next few weeks uh, to a much deeper bearish uh, crossover, right? So we can see we did have one, actually, a little while back of our uh, 20 and 35-day PMO line. So this is back, oh, maybe in, I want to say mid-June, something like mid-June here. Uh, so, right, so this doesn't, right, we did get a, a little bit of a bearish crossover here. This doesn't necessarily mean we're going to have a huge move to the downside. Uh, but as you can see, right, technically we are staying pretty, pretty far above where our 20 day moving average is. Uh, so, expecting something in the next couple of weeks of at least a correction and some consolidation, maybe down to this 20 day moving average. Um, however, because we do also have the 55 PMO looming. Uh, I would not be surprised to see something of a correction, maybe a little bit deeper, down to 600, maybe the 50-day. Again, not something catastrophic, not, not a complete collapse of our, almost a complete collapse of our structure, uh, danger of a complete coll collapse of our structure on our daily chart, uh, like we saw all the way back in April. Uh, but uh, yeah, something of a bit of a larger correction, uh, followed potentially by some, um, some consolidation uh, coming out of, going, yeah, I would maybe going into FOMC, but maybe coming out of it. Uh, so if we look at our options that I should say as a remark for BTC, we don't quite see that same dynamic. I mean, maybe we do see a correction um, down to the 20 day, but we don't see the uh, the same degree, I should say, 
uh, of um, momentum and stability like we do in the S&P 500. Um, as we look at our options, what I will say and point out is, right, we do, I mean, we do still have that 630 mark kind of hanging out overhead. We do have some um, call gamma support in, um, right, the dollar levels just below 630, so 628, 629, still very supportive. Uh, would not be surprised to, surprised to see some low volatility trading in that kind of 627 plus to 630 area. Um, maybe if we see a breach of 630 midweek, that could see a bit of a repositioning uh, a little bit farther up. Uh, call wall shift if there's still some time, um, you know, allowing for continued kind of gradual, slight, grindy bullishness into the end of the month. And it does look like that is what our, our options market for the meantime has uh, shifted toward. Uh, so into the end of the week, uh, the uh, evaporation of a fair bit of our gamma as a result of that monthly OPEX. We can see that going into today, of course, going into the end of the week and even going into the week following. So basically heading right up until the day after FOMC, we are call gex skewed. So as long as we stay in this area, basically the upper 620s, we remain call gex skewed, we remain volatility suppressed, and uh, it does not look like we will have that kind of imminent um, uh, consolidation, but really retracement to the downside uh, in any noticeable amount. So that's, con especially this week, that seems to be what's projected uh, as a continuation of this low volatility, um, really call gamma supported uh, environment. That does shift going into August. We can see uh, positioning here, uh, really even August 1st, but especially August OPEX, uh, which is doing a little bit better than it was, I think, last week. Uh, but then into, yeah, even September OPEX here, we can still see that uh, traders, institutions are shifted toward uh, put primary uh, positioning. So uh, options dealers are primarily put exposed going into August OPEX, but not until we move out of July. So very interesting to see an extended uh, period of lower volatility, of volatility suppression uh, going into the end of July. Now, I've also pointed out, we've we've been discussing here, of course, that while uh, SPY has been kind of in this frozen up position, GME has likely, uh, has similarly, I should say, uh, likewise, not like we, uh, been in this frozen down position. So we can see we've been grinding down here while our moving averages have been flattening out. We did on Friday, as a result of Friday's training, we did get a very slight bullish PMO cross. So our so Roaring Kitties price momentum oscillator has started to move ever so slightly back to the upside uh, and uh, does look, I mean, at this current rate, we might expect in several weeks to go ahead and flash some bullish signals um, as we get close to a zero line and PMO 55 cross. Uh, so just to give you an idea what that looks like on his charts over on stock charts, right? We can see he uses the same indicators. The values are a little different, but in fact, probably on Thursday, Wednesday or Thursday of last week, we ended up seeing um, something similar, right? So we can see here already we have uh, that uh, that bullish PMO cross ever so slightly, ever so slightly, not about to explode to the upside, but um that is definitely a good sign and does indicate that in the medium term, uh, we do look to be on the other side of, uh, of bearishness. So this is an early indicator, an early signal possibly contributing to this idea that despite the fact that we've been uh, stagnating here, volume has been net accumulatory. Of course, we don't know what's happening um, over on the dark pool side of things. Uh, it should be, yeah, at this point, it's, it should be clear, right? A, a very large percentage of our volume, really the majority on any given day is is occurring off exchange in GameStop. So for example, if we pop over and take a look at, where, at how uh, our volume is divvied up between exchanges, we can see, yeah, so more than half, 63, so almost two thirds of our net volume on Friday was directed off exchange. So for almost 4.2, million shares of GameStop, of course, traded on a day that didn't hit 6.5 million volume. That means that around 2.4 million volume was all that we had uh, on our on our lit exchange, which once you realize that's what's going on in the lit exchange, then you realize right why our, uh, our IV levels are so low. And uh, yeah, they are still uh, in this kind of um, really five year lows here, not quite so low as we were maybe about a week uh, 
uh, week, week and a half ago, uh, but still really on the whole, uh, really, really pretty low. Mm. Let's bump back over here. Yeah, so we might start to see a little bit more appreciation, some, some maybe some higher closes moving back into the 24 area, maybe ahead of August OPEX. Of course, why all this is important, why seeing some of the signals, why accumulation, right? Why the signal of accumulation is important. Uh, going into August OPEX, of course, we do have the institutional filing deadline. That is, institutions will have to reveal how they have uh, changed their positioning going into the end of June. Mm, this is, of course, very interesting given that, uh, right, we had this really big offering uh, mere weeks before the end of June. Uh, so June 30th would be the end of the fiscal year um, for uh, not the end of the, maybe end of the fiscal year for institutions. Um, I'm not sure, but it is the end of the quarter. And that date then marks uh, within 45 days, institutions have to go ahead uh, and file uh, uh, file um, holdings reports. So um, how their positions have changed. So we will see that uh, the expectation there is given these very appealing prices going into the end of June, that uh, likely some of this price appreciation uh, did in fact have to do with institutional buying. And of course, as institutions go ahead and reveal their own positions and reveal potentially that they have been accumulating GameStop, uh, this may result in some anticipatory price appreciation in several weeks ahead of our lead up to September earnings, which is projected to be quite good uh, based on especially switch to sales. Mm. With this in mind, right, we'll take a look at our options data. And uh, yeah, and reflect basically on what traders are looking at in the options market going into this week's expiry. We did have a substantial amount of our call OI rolled from last week's uh, OPEX into this week. Not, not a tremendous amount. Most of it, of course, expired, but we did have quite a bit. What I would say, uh, sort of going over my analysis today, uh, much like going into last week, what we did see was most of this OI change um, from a net perspective, right? So colored boxes indicate net uh, net shifts. Um, we are looking at primarily trades at the bid on both sides of the chain. Uh, so right, blue box is neutral, uh, green is gonna be bullish, uh, red is gonna be bearish. Uh, so of course on the on the put side, right, uh, short puts, uh, puts trades at the bid are bullish. On the, ass, uh, on the call side, right, trades at the bid are generally bearish. Uh, what uh, this in total says is that traders are still by and large short volatility. So despite the fact that we're looking at five-year lows in IV, um, most traders are not anticipating a return of that IV in the short term. So still very short IV, still taking short call trades, short put trades, not really, uh, not really expecting us uh, to go anywhere, uh, certainly into, into this week. Uh, as we come out of this week, uh, just sort of summarily, uh, we are looking at mostly neutral SKUs, but this is still again indicating likely uh, short volatility trades. Um, so largely neutral, maybe just slightly bearish net, but by and large short volatility. Of course, being short volatility with GameStop is is equivalent um, to being kind of slightly uh, slightly bearish. So no no real anticipation there. Uh, cer certainly nothing like in the sense of uh, you know price collapse or structural collapse, um, but really not seeing anything yet that uh, any any trader or institution is is looking at an immediate emergence from this particular uh, trading milieu that we've seen low volatility, largely short volatility trades in the options market and kind of sticking around the kind of 23, mid 23 area, not seeing anything that would point out that someone expects us to immediately start moving out of this particular structure. Um, we have continued to see one or more institutions build out these short put trades. Again, what can I make today? Uh, account on, on Reddit and um, and on X has per written particularly quite a, a bit about these, has been investigating these, so definitely go check out that account if you have the chance uh, and you wanna dive a little bit more into this. Um, what seems to be the case is uh, these, when they do happen, they do sort of freeze our price in place. They do stop movements to the upside. Um, not sure exactly. I made a video myself a while back. What I think is uh, these may be uh, these may function as something of an interest rate hedge. So uh, these are um, hedged short put bets. They act as synthetic stock bets, um, and they replace 
the need to say hedge an exposed um, directional derivatives exposure, something like a swap otherwise. Um, so uh, we do continue to see these come in. Um, it may mean that they are preparation for some move to the upside in, in uh, you know, several weeks into the future. Uh, but for now, right, again, not suggesting anything especially bullish or that we would have moved from this, uh, emerge, I should say, from this structure. Max pain for the weeks uh, still sits at 23 and it it is at 23 right out into August OPEX. So really from this standpoint, not really forecasting much moving in the immediate future out of, uh, out of our current environment. Um, Gex wise, so gamma exposure wise, again, you'll notice our chart is looking pretty much identical to what we've seen over the past couple of weeks, that 24, 25 area serving as this kind of composite overhead resistance level. Uh, while of course, um, you know, we, we uh, continue to trade uh, in this range, kind of keeping us um, above, uh, I should say, right, uh, short puts, especially keeping us kind of afloat above 23, although we do have some potential, I suppose, to move into the 2250s like we saw a couple of weeks ago. Um, but if not, if we don't see some institutional lending uh, deployed in order to affect that, then again, largely it's looking like trading in the 23 to 24 range um, with some sort of externality required to kind of bump us up a little bit higher. But again, not not expecting a close, um, certainly not above 25, really probably not even above 24, uh, given the distribution of ROI at those ranges. As we can see, right, 24, 13,000 contracts. It's possible, but I would say uh, still unlikely. So until we see something significant coming in and reconfiguring our landscape, uh, the projection is largely going to stay looking like we would the past couple of weeks. So somewhere in the 23s is likely what we're looking at as a close. And, uh, you know, that's information to use to guide trading and positioning um, otherwise, right? So, uh, yeah, yeah. Again, if you're interested in um, in taking a look at some more detail, uh, detailed breakdowns, of um, the types of trading strategies I use in order to, you know, when I, I know it's right, we love GameStop, we love the company, we wanna see it, um, appreciate certainly with respect to the underlying investment. Uh, but at the same time, this type of price action uh, is something that can be taken advantage of for profit, uh, just like really, really all situations. All situations uh, offer opportunities for positive return. Uh, it's merely a question of developing and deploying the right tools and tactics in order to do so. Uh, so if you want to yeah, dive into some of our of our most recent discussion, we, we did uh, bring up some of this, uh, some really great questions on uh, on Friday. So, uh, yeah, definitely go check out that live stream uh, down in the bottom if you want to. If you want more, if you're loving the 21st century renaissance experience of GameStop. Yeah, definitely go. Uh, definitely go give that live stream recording a taste. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, um, as always. Right. Love you guys. Thank you so much uh, for watching and listening. I'm looking forward to another to another great week. And uh, yeah, let's uh, let's go GameStop. So we'll we'll see you guys tomorrow morning for another for another OI newsletter breakdown. Uh, take care now.